Hi, hi, hi. It's Mrs. Stitches, uh, Sheila. Um, this is a channel about cross stitching and welcome. Welcome everybody. Um, I have a bunch of new subscribers. Oh, <laughs> in the, there's a mirror right here and you can see the reflection of the cats getting on the bed. That's pretty funny. Um, I have a bunch of new subscribers. So welcome everybody. I got a shout out and it's kind of a funny little story, I think. Um, it, I, I got notes today. Today's going to be a bit of a long one. I have, I'll get to the story in a minute. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I got so much going on. My head's like, bleh. Um, I have, um, a finish. <laughs> I have a new start. I have lots of whips. Uh, I have sort of haul um i guess it's sort of stitchy kindness um and it's the start of it's all connected of flossoween and so i am actually going to film a little bit more regularly to cover this flossoween so i will cover that later on but essentially my husband has made me a mystery october advent type thing. He's bought a pattern, he's bought the fabric, he's got some floss, and he divided the pattern into 32 squares, and he is releasing a square a day, but it's going to finish on the 30th, so he's going to give me the 31st to fully finish it. And he's giving me flosses, two flosses every day. It actually doesn't have that many flosses, but it's to, um, I'm only allowed to stitch with the flosses I have. So, you will see that at the end. You will see um, the today is October 3rd. This is floss tube number 25. And um, yeah, at the end, um, I'm going to put the, oh heck, let's put it in now. So, because I'm talking about it and I'm so excited about it, I'm going to, I'm mixing everything all up. I am going to show you the uh, whip. I don't have the pattern, but here is how he divided it up. So here's a picture of that. And like I said, each week he's releasing a square or two. The first day he's released two. There's a couple of days he's going to release two. I pick the squares. So not knowing, I picked in the middle. And then what I'm doing is a tiny decisions with adjacent squares to see which one I get next. So, so far I've gotten um, a straight line and then tomorrow I get one that's going out the side. So, so far they're all in the middle, but there's not a lot of stitching done because he's so far given me six colors, but only two are in the pattern. And only today was only one. Um, so I'm going to have a bit of catching up to do eventually. But nobody spoil this for me. I do not know. I know the name of this pattern, but I don't look, know what it looks like. So I'm not looking it up. But this is the fabric he gave me. And it is called Haunted Hollow. He got it at uh, Stitch Bug in Moncton, New Brunswick. It is gorgeous. I love it. It is a 28 count um, Jobelin. And I started with a square. My first square, I think, was like, this is the middle right here. My first square was sort of this howl and this red stuff here and that. Well, my first two squares, two squares, was this. And then today I got a square going up and I got this. So it's not a lot to see so far. But that's the start. I'm calling it 4H because the pattern has two H's in it also. And then the fabric has two H's. So there's four H's all together. So that's pretty cool. So um, tomorrow, like I said, I get another square. Hopefully I get a color that is actually in the um, what I got exposed. Uh, like I said, I only got two colors so far. He's given me six flosses, but the other four flosses aren't, they're extras. He just kind of bought a bunch of flosses and some are in it, some aren't. Some he's missing. He's missing six colors. 
um, but I'm not allowed to substitute until the fifth day of the um, month. So uh, he will let me know when I can substitute. So two more days before I can substitute one of the colors I know is not there. So that's fun. Um, so once again, oh yeah, I told you dates today is October 3rd. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I got a bunch of new subscribers due to a shout out by Darlene D Dion Designs. Um, it was funny because I actually started following her on Instagram and then I saw that she had a floss tube posted. And on Instagram, my name's different than my channel name. So you're probably not going to connect that who I am. Um, and so I watched her, her floss tube and, for the first time and I was like, oh, she sounds like she's nearby where I live. And I was like making all these comments because she was talking about Fiona coming. And I was like, or Fiona had already happened. And I was like, oh, it sounds like she's near where I live because it was very similar to my experience. And I'm like making all these comments. And then laid into her floss tube, she shouted me out and she knew exactly where I lived. And I kind of have an idea where she lives. And it was so cool. And then I got all these new subscribers and a whole bunch of them are from my area. And I here I thought I was the only not the only like oh i'm so special but it doesn't feel like where i live there's many cross people cross stitching i've actually taught our librarian to cross stitch or encouraged her to cross stitch a lot of people say i used to cross stitch but there weren't like a lot of active people cross stitching so it's just so neat to actually suddenly know there's these people around and that just it it i don't know it just gives me a uh, good sense good good sense uh, so thank you very much, Darlene. Um, she does quilting. She also has an Etsy shop, which she has some great uh, project bags. I will put everyone I mentioned, I'll put their um, the full name of their channel and maybe the Etsy shop. I'm not sure. Um, usually it's the same thing uh, down below in the description box. Um, but she gave me a very nice uh, shout out and I really appreciate it. I enjoy her uh, cross stitch channel. It looks like she posts once a month. So it'll be a little while before I see her next one, but uh, always glad to have new floss tubers to watch. Um, speaking of which, I'm gonna mention Fiona. Um, obviously, I'm sure everyone knows that uh, Fiona hit, I think that was about a week and a half ago. Uh, it hit very, um, it hit a, a lot more north to us and Cape Breton and PEI were um, severely affected. And even now at, I think it's nine days or 10 days, they still don't have power in some places. And it's just like, wow. And I know a lot of power trucks came up from Maine, from New Brunswick, and um, there just was so much damage and so many trees to be removed and so much work to be done. So hopefully they get power back soon um i'm sure that's uh, uh we were super lucky we only had the power out for we had no damage around our area um we were barely uh we had winds that gusted up to i believe 120k per hour or something like that um i will show i did a video the next day a short video uh we walked over to the bay of fundy just a, a little cove that taking you before but I walked just did a short video to catch the waves and the sound of the wind so I'm going to insert that video right here post hurricane Fiona here we come out to beautiful cove and we're just coming out to see this band in the winds Fiona didn't hit us too hard some pretty good waves out here uh, obviously the wind's still up it's down though from what it was last night
was really, like I said, our power went out in the middle of the night. It was back on by noon the next day. So we really weren't affected. Um, it was a, a not a, we didn't have a good night's sleep because of the howling wind and our dog got kind of upset. So she was up in our bedroom, kind of reassuring, like putting her head on the bed, like, are you guys still here? And stuff like that. And we get kind of a weird sound when the wind goes in certain directions of the um, vinyl siding kind of making a hum sound it's 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 very odd so didn't sleep very well that night but that's minor all caught up now so if you recall last time i had my floss tube i did a wheel and spun what i would stitch on my free time i got dark queen at sea and so i thought it kind of appropriate with fiona coming that she would be my Stitch. So I actually almost the whole um, weekend of Fiona, I know she's gone longer than the weekend, but I started her on Friday. I stitched exclusively on, I'm calling her Fiona, my Dark Queen at Sea. And so I got quite a bit of done. Um, Evertotes, or Off the Grid Needle Arts, was having sort of a weekend of finish what you can. And so I made a goal of finishing her hair. I had um, some stuff over here to finish up. And I also made a goal of finishing another fish and finishing her arms. I hadn't had her arms finished. And I got that all done. And then I started working on this orb and the corner of the frame. And so this is the ultimate corner. I still have another horn to do there, but I got quite a bit. To, there's tons to do. This is a really big stitch, but that's uh, my dark queen of sea and uh, Fiona. And she, I think she's absolutely gorgeous. I'll bring her a little closer and see her face. Supposedly more back stitching to do like around her nose and around her mouth, but I actually like the way she is. So I probably will leave her as is. And my orb has, um, is using a, one of the DMC variegated flosses. Uh, I kind of like it because I think it looks like the earth or kind of a strange orb. Her hair is a mix of uh, green, two browns, and gray. And uh, this is a coral patch or um, some seaweed. And then there's also a coral patch that's going to start. And then that's the fish I did down there. So absolutely gorgeous. I will do her as... I have time to do her. Um, I'm also working on Dark Queen of the Earth, which I want to keep on track. So she's she will be done when I can. So, and with my new uh, how 4H Club or my 4H uh, Halloween um, stitch mystery stitch, I work on that every day. So I'm going to stay on top of that. Um, I'm going to have a lot of stitching to do as the more colors get released so that will work out really well because there's 24 hours cross stitch this month in i believe october whatever the weekend is i think it's the 21st 22nd 23rd but now um so that was my last uh spin i did another spin this morning to see what i'll work on if i have any free time coming up so here is my spin now Okay, here we go. This is um, our next stitch for the two weeks when I get a chance, when I'm having free stitch time. Here we go. Wonder what it'll be. Oh, salty day. It's a salty day. Okay, yay. We got salty day. I will get on that and I will show it. Okay, bye. And as you can see, I got something called salty day. And so that is a full coverage piece. It's um, some rocks in Newfoundland with a wave crashing up. It's done by um, painting with stitches. She used to have an Etsy shop, but she got frustrated with Etsy as everyone does. And now she just has uh, a website. So I think it's paintingstitches.com or just if you search painting with stitches, I'm sure you'll get it. And so she has a lot of animal um, cross stitching and some scenery and she actually really paints and so she's using her own artist work I think she took this from a photograph but anyways it's it's a big huge rock and there's going to be waves crashing up here and some water so uh it's uh 66,000 stitches I'm not sure how far I am done but I will be working on this if I have any free time so that's uh 
salty day. I like to call it salty day on the rocks. I think it's salty day at the rocks, but. And another thing that I'm gonna work on if I got some free time, I'm sure kind of manage my free time, is it's with Be Gone is a thing being put on by, I'm not sure the name of the person, but I'll put some details down below. It's, um, they did it last year for the first time. It's She's a Quilter. And the idea is to work on your wicks and try and get them done for the end of the year. And so last year it was October, November, December. People found December too busy. And so this year it's only October, November. So whip be gone. I've made a list of the whips I want to be gone. And I decided to pick this one up because it's Halloween. And this was from last year, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. And the only thing, originally it's only this house here. Um, but I added this boat and I want to do the background of the boat and I tried to do it in a color But I want the the letters to or the words to stand out and they don't stand out very well So I'm going to switch this to black. It's going to be a black background If it's I got to pick out this brown and then I'm going to put in black if it doesn't work I Might try white Or I might just be done with it. So we're going to see if I can get this whip be gone. And this is a memorial piece for um, our cat passed away last year on Thanksgiving, which is in Canada is on October, the second week in October. And so that's coming up too. So it'd be good to finish this by then. So that's what, why the boat, because we call her Captain Frosty. And we I put in a cat there and a cat there and put Captain Frosty long may your big jib draw. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I talked about Fiona and I talked about my next two stitches. Um, I want to do another couple of shout outs. Uh, I don't know how I came across these people, but one person I came across, she's a very new cross stitcher. Her, her cross stitch channel is Angie Slowly Crafts. And I believe she's Canadian. I believe she's in Edmonton. I'm not sure. She doesn't actually say where she is, but she's an Edmonton Oilers fan. And she, um, she's got a wide variety of things. And she just recently finished. It was a Carol Manning. Um, she's doing the um, Birthstones by Carol Manning, which I hadn't seen before. And um, she was doing it as a daily stitch. And she just showed all the progress that she made with the daily stitch. I did a daily stitch some time ago, but I had gotten away from it. So inspired by her, I decided to start a daily 30. And my daily 30 is Twisted Band Sampler, which also works well with Cross Stitch Camp, which you're supposed to try to do a sampler, start it and finish it by the end of this year. You didn't have to start it. You could work on one you already done. So I, this is my Twisted Band Sampler. And I'm working on it 30 minutes every day. And so I've been working on, this is band number 10. It's specialty stitches. And I will show a picture, a close up here of the specialty stitches I'm working on. And I do love it. I actually enjoy it so much. I really enjoy the specialty stitches that not this year or next year, but maybe two years from now, I might actually do it again with different colors, with more dynamic colors and on a white background. Um, and just maybe like, I don't know, just some other different colors. We'll see. But I really do love it. So I'm happy to be doing that as my daily 30. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to show you this temperature tree. And I'm going to leave this out so that I finish up what I'm behind, I'm behind since the last floss tube. Every floss tube, I do this after the floss tube. So here we go. Um, this is uh, September. So halfway through September, I got to finish off September and get going on October. But that's my temperature tree. We're definitely getting cooler. Um, the nights are starting to get colder, colder. It's just like, it's almost like September 4th or 5th. It was like somebody switched on a switch and it was just like one day summer, next day fall. It's 
cooler out. Um, yeah, you have to wear, it's definitely sweater weather or um, sweatshirt weather. Uh, the heat's clicking on, which it hasn't done since April. Um, after Fiona, all my uh, plants have just sort of died back. So today I have to pick all my green tomatoes and all the tomato plants. Um, all my pumpkin plants, they're now like everything is sort of exposed. That um, I'm still leaving them on the vine a little longer, see if they get more orange. Um, and luckily I picked my corn right before um, Fiona hit. But yeah, it's just like a really sharp, like it was one season and then it was another season. It, it's just kind of crazy. Okay, another shout out I'd like to do it. Oh, I, I, Angie Slowly Craft. She's got a wide variety of things and it's really um, interesting. She's, she's very, I don't want to say nervous, but she actually reminds me of Janet Jabbers for some strange reason, but she's um, very um, kind of unsure of whether the whole She's an introvert and she's putting herself out there and she's kind of like um, surprised that she can actually talk for so long, feeling self-conscious about talking to herself, but showing all her things. She's got um, a lot of different projects. She's got like a Mario type one. Uh, let's see what else. She's got a full coverage that she's doing with another person, another floss tuber. Um, that's a heaven and earth design. That's a beautiful sunset with a mountain. Um, yeah, a whole bunch. It's some really a lot of variety, a lot of different, different types of cross stitching. Another person that I found, and I'm not even sure, I think I found them because they commented on my floss tube is KEB Studio Creations. And it's a husband and wife team. And they also have an Etsy shop and they do designs and have PDF patterns. And I really enjoyed them. I always, I, I kind of like when there's two people and they play off each other a bit. It was very entertaining. I really enjoyed. And some interesting ideas like she did, um, she's done one stitch using orts. And I thought, oh my gosh, my, well, my orts, I don't think are that long, but she did the stitch with just using upper orts. And I thought, what a cool idea. Um, she's got lots of designs. There are some houses that she's done kind of with different seasons and one house that was her, I think her and her husband lived at it. I think it was her, her brother's house or something. And it's, she shows the actual picture of the real house and then the stitching, the stitching done. And so just some really, really neat stuff. So I, I'm uh, really looking forward to going back and watching her from the beginning. So, um, I'm going to definitely doing that. So that's K-E-B Studio Creation. So there's my shout outs. So let's get into all the other stuff. So we have a finish. I'm going to throw that in right now instead of carrying on. I still have more whips, but this is my fully finish. Fully finish in time for Halloween. I got another one I'm going to do uh, probably in two weeks or something. But this is um, out of uh, Jess Cross Stitch. Uh, I believe the 2019 issue. I don't have it here. I could pause and go get it. Maybe I'll do that. Just a sec. Okay, found the magazine. It is uh, Just Cross Stitch 2018 edition. And the original pattern was done by Elizabeth Spurlock. And it was called Ready to Party. And so I did that out of the magazine and finished it. I can't remember when I finished it. And then I fully finished it by um, putting this fabric, which is kind of fun, <laughs> kind of bright, but kind of fun, and made a pillow because pillows are easy for me to make. So this is uh, my fully finished. Um, she calls it ready to party. I think that's kind of an odd name. So I call it the owl and the cat. So there you go. Okay, back to whips because I've got to get through this because I've got lots to do. Okay, so I got my daily stitch here uh this is felix and i'm stitching this for my husband's birthday next year and i'm at about 63 percent right now so going great guns and mostly i've been working over here i think i did quite a bit of the red since i last seen you and i'm now working on the black i'll probably go down to this corner and then go across and then come back up so there we go enjoy that i actually 
It's odd. And I never would imagine this. My favorite part is working the black on black. And I think it's because it's just block stitching. The other stuff is so confetti. You wouldn't know it, but there are tons of colors in this red, tons of colors in this yellow. So it's nice to just get some block stitching. I can get, I do a hundred stitches a day on it. So uh, there you go. Next, I'm sure everyone's going to be happy to see this is a uh, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. I've done all the squares around and I'm working on the center square, which I will have done before Halloween. Not quite there yet, but I'm still on schedule. So close. I'm getting close. There's my Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Nice. I wish this could be my screen grab. I don't grab. I don't think it'll be, but I'll bring the block I'm working on. So this is two blocks. The center one, they combine two blocks. And so I've done the one block. I believe I've done everything on it. And I'm working on the second block. It sort of splits, uh, splits right about there. Well, you can tell by the uh, a block above was where it splits. So there you go. It's beautiful. I love the orange uh, um, spider up here. Uh, the spider webs were so, so easy to do. Those were great. Uh, the smoke of the fire was actually hard to do. Uh, just kind of counting and stuff. But um, there's going to be a pumpkin and an owl over here and a moon and another bat. So uh, again, when I have some free time, I'll work on this. So that's Halloween at Hawker and Hollow by uh, Carriage House Samplers. Samplings. Um, next, every 10th of the month and 20th and 30th, if I have time, I'm working on uh, Glendon Place Pirates Poltergeist, and I'm doing it as a cell with um, Stitching at the Cabin, and I believe I'm going to get the other people's names, too. There's a couple other people that are doing it, too. Another woman, she's done this whole thing coming out here and she's about to start on the dragon so it's interesting when you're doing a sale and people take different approaches on how they go about it i'm working up over to this corner here so i'm looking forward to doing the moon i got a special thread i'm going to be doing so this is what i got done i got a lot done so i got my i got a ghost i got a ghost and so yeah so excuse all the hanging threads but that's what i I've done so it's just one mask with a ghost on top so that's quite fun and I'll just uh, yeah so that's that mm. uh, next let's see yeah oh I'm, I'm almost to the last one um next is a bit of a story um so we it's my travel stitching and so um, we just got back from a little trip again so we went down to Yarmouth um, and went in a race. And I've been training in this race um, to do uh, race walking. And you think walking versus running, oh, that must be so much easier. It's not. It actually hurts a lot more to walk fast versus to run slow. Um, and so I, um, the event was at their airport. The airport doesn't have commercial flights anymore, but it's, they said it's still an active airport. And so this is the t-shirt, <laughs> Starlight Runway Run. And um, we got these bags, which is also on the, that's on the back of the t-shirt. And I'm using it as a project bag. That's for my 4-H uh, club. And we got all sorts of things that lit up. I got another thing downstairs I forgot to bring up, but we got like, um, like this and it flashes. I got things on my shoes that flash. We got this metal, it's got a plane in it. And even our bibs were um, like a boarding pass. It says boarding pass. So how fun is that? And we, um, I have been training for it. But I didn't know how I was going to do. I mean, I I, I wanted my um, walking to be comparable to my running, which was a slow, slow jog or whatever. 
Um, and when I was training, um, when you do race walking properly, you're landing with your heels and your legs straight and your shins start to just burn. Um, and then my form falls apart that I actually can't do that. Um, but I kept training, 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 and I was at a certain time and I set a goal, um, which was first, this is, was 5k, uh, 48 minutes was my first goal. And then a dream goal was 45 minutes. In training, I got just under 48 minutes. So I got like a 47 minute, maybe a 46 something. So probably 47. So 45 was a total dream goal. I did it in 44 minutes and 26 seconds. And it was actually longer than 5K. It was 5.2. So I did an 8.30 average, which I'm super pleased with. And it didn't hurt as much. I was sore the next day. My legs were fatigued. I actually get more of a workout on my legs doing this race walking versus doing jog and it's I think it's because you're actually creating all your motion or you're really tightening your muscles to do it properly but I was so so happy I was really really pleased and I, I mean it's not as fast a long time ago in another lifetime I was a uh, intense runner I'm not anymore but I used to be a lot faster I'm not anymore I'm much older <laughs> I've had some injuries that have slowed me down. Um, but at one point I qualified for Boston. I ran Boston twice. I qualified twice for it. So I wasn't like an elite, nowhere near that, but my best was a 3.45 marathon. So there was a time where I was a faster runner. Now my marathons are more like six or seven hours, like double the time. Um, and it's just what it is. It is what it is. And I, Think it doesn't really matter you're out getting exercise you're enjoying the outdoors um, but this race walking has given me new drive uh, it's something I can improve on it's not too intense on my body um, but besides the shins and my knees hurt a bit but nothing major um, my knees would hurt with running too and it would be also my back would start hurting too so it's all different so it's all good and I get exercise and I'm, I'm the, there's a difference between an ache that's bad and an ache that is good and so right now with the race walking my ache is kind of good it's actually muscular versus something different so uh, so anyways we traveled down to Yarmouth and we did this race and then afterwards we drove Yarmouth back to our home should have been only about a couple hours but instead we took the other highway and went up to Halifax to Dartmouth to look at a boat and vehicles and such and then came back down our main highway so we made a real round trip to get home and um, included in that because I've done a couple of bridges I have a short little video of going over the bridge the I think it's the McKay Bridge. I'm not really sure, but it's one of the bridges connecting Halifax to Dartmouth. So I'm going to insert that here. Here we are on the McDonald Bridge. McKay. McKay Bridge, uh, just outside of Halifax. And there's a big boat down there. Uh, yeah, we just were on a little bit of a road trip. It's a bridge. I, I'm getting me known for filming bridges, so must film this bridge too. It's a big, huge container ship over there. Don't know if we can see it. Nice bridge. And I believe that's Halifax way over there. We're going to Dartmouth, which is just on the other side of the water. What? Dartmouth, Dartmouth's right down there, over there. And Halifax is way down there. There we go, that was a bridge. The McKay Bridge. And while I was traveling, I got tons of stitching done. So this is um, a bee study. And it's by Kathy Barrick. Uh, you can get it on her Etsy shop. And um, it's a book. Uh, so it's a, a, yeah, a book. And I'm actually thinking of finishing if I can find a book that will fit, kind of wrapping it around a book or putting it on the outside of a book. Um, but I'm about 50% done on this, I think. I, I ha find that hard to believe because there's this page and then there's the spine of the book and then there's the back page. But, and the spine of the book, she has Kay Barrick and um, a year. 
and I'm debating I'm probably gonna do maybe Mrs. B or Sheila B uh, and a year but we'll see uh, I'm still playing out how I'm gonna actually personalize the book but uh, that's that's uh, that so um, gosh I'm gonna check my notes I think that's everything I can't see my time because my little thing let me just take a peek Oh, 33 minutes. <laughs> I rushed through things. I thought this was going to be an hour long. Um, I should be ticking things off because then I know what I've done and what I haven't done. But I am going to just include a question. So I'm sure everybody watches the Bougie, Sis, Bougie Stitchers. Um, they're quite fun to watch and they do a question at the end of their video and I thought I'm going to do one too and I, I watched another person who was doing a stitch with me Athena or no Alaria Alara Alara and um, she mentioned that you can get these questions um, online and so I, I googled some questions so I came up with the question what is your biggest regret to date what is your big, biggest regret to date? And my biggest regret is, and this kind of goes with the racing and everything, is twofold. There's sort of two, but I, the, probably the biggest one is um, when I met my husband, we, I think before we got married, maybe probably were engaged, uh, went for some hikes. And he lived in Alberta and I lived in BC and we um, would meet somewhere in the middle and we, uh, went for some hikes and camping in the Rockies and I think this probably was the first major hike we did together uh, we were going up I think it's called Cory Pass and it was a loop you would go you kind of went out a thing and then you were going to be doing a loop and then you come back and so we went out to the intersection and then we started the hike and we took our dog with us there were some rough sections and there was this one big huge scree hill that you uh went along at kind of had a footpath maybe that wide and then it's a big sharp hill above you and a big sharp hill below you uh, i guess the dog our dog olive was a little bit nervous and afterwards i found out that my husband was also nervous going just the whole visual of seeing this slope going down and then we got up into a place that was called the gargoyles and I think we were at our highest point. And then after the gargoyles, we started going down. And that is when my fear or phobia took place. So I have developed a fear that I don't like when I feel like I don't have good grip, when I feel like I'm slipping. And this was sort of like a loose gravel, not a scree, but it was kind of a loose gravel. It was a switchback because it was such a steep going down. But he just headed off with the dog and I was frozen at the top. I couldn't move and I didn't know what to do. And I just eventually had to call out to him and said, I can't move. And he gave me the choice. Do you want to turn around and go back or should we try to go forward? Because it's part of a loop. So we're about halfway. So it's either way is the same thing. And him giving me the out and saying, do you want to turn back? I said, yes. So we went back. We had to cross the scree hill. There was this rock scramble that Olive had to go over the first time. I had to go over the second time and didn't really like. So Olive faced her fears. My husband faced his fears. I didn't. And I did not even sleep that night. I had so much regrets. If I could have turned back time and changed that instant, and made myself go down that hill because there was nothing really, really scary. It was just an inner fear because he went fine. He, everyone else could walk down it fine, but I was frozen. Stupid. Like it's, there's nothing wrong that it drove me nuts. And that is an odd regret, but it is a regret. Cause, and I think it's probably a regret because I had a chance to challenge myself and I didn't. There's one other time, uh, a race that I did, used to do in BC, called Kusum Climb, and we would go up, it was like a 23K race, 
where you went up a mountain and then you went down a mountain. That first year I did that, I was shocked because you went up the mountain and you're going through some snow. I have no problem with slippery surfaces going up, slippery surface going down. Got to the top, it is solid snow for I don't know how high near the top of the mountain. And people had just slid down. There were ropes put between tree and tree and you had to wear, they told you to bring leather gloves and you hold on to the ropes and you, they would just slide and they made a tunnel. And I stood up there and I'm like, what do I do? And I was frozen with fear again. And that time there was no choice in the matter. Either way, you had to go down snow and slippery. And so I was frozen for a while, let a few people go by me. And eventually I ended up finding my way, which was sitting on my bum and holding onto the rope and got bruised like crazy, but that's okay. I made it down. I faced my fear. I was able to do it. Um, so that is probably my biggest regret for just not at that moment, not making that choice. And, you know, you just, you live with that and you maybe internalize that and um, realize, you know, you want to be safe. Um, you don't want to hurt yourself, but there is ways to, uh, my husband will always say, lean into your discomfort. And I think that was before we even knew that phrase, but it's true. There is times you can lean into your discomfort and, you know, not get yourself dangerous, but just kind of something, you know, challenge yourself. So that was probably my biggest regret. Um, there is one other, um, I, I was doing ultra marathons and I did, um, 100k I completed it three times finally tried to graduate to 100 miles and didn't complete it I only got to 82 miles and then the next year tried it again same thing next year same thing and at the first year actually was probably the year I could have been most successful I, I um, the other years I time out and so you had to be to a certain point by a certain time that first year I had plenty of time and I just gave up and so that is also big. Uh, I, in hindsight, you think at the time, you know, I was probably in my late forties and I think at that time I was so fit that I thought, Oh, no problem. I can be able to, I can do this another year and things happen. You can have an injury, um, which I eventually did, um, that changes things. Uh, you get older. <laughs> um, my life just changed. I'm now a different person than I was then. And so now I am race walking and finally challenging in that. And a 5k race walk was a magnificent challenge. And I was very pleased with what I did. So regrets but move forward and maybe learn lessons from regrets. I guess that's, that's all I can say. So I think that's it for me. So going forward, um, Oh, one more thing. So I'm going to put in, um, like I said, I'm going to do a flossoween or a vlogoween, but I like flossoween. Athena's, um, stitching goddess designs is doing a daily, uh, flossoween. She calls it. So if you're interested, you should definitely check it out. She's posting every day and she's giving away every day. I might give away sometime. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Um, but uh, like I said, my, my husband's been giving me um, some flosses each day and he gave me the fabric. Uh, I was just going to show you today's. So I'm going to insert um, day one and day two. Hi. Oh, I shouldn't do hi, 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 but I'll do hi, hi, hi. Uh, I am doing a vlog -oween. I didn't think I would. Um, I'll have explained this in the video, but today is October 1st. And so I woke up today and this was my first package. Now, funny thing is, is when I, this is the package, <laughs> uh, my husband sent me last night, um, a little grid with boxes and I get to choose the boxes. So I'm going to show that here. And um, I get to choose the order, but he said, I am, the way he described it is, I'm only getting the things inside the, the Advent box. So that's all part of the pattern, but I'll probably be getting something to go along with it, presumably skeins. 
um, a floss and I'm only allowed to stitch with the skeins of floss that he gives me. I can't go to stash. So I'm only gonna be able to st stitch parts. So I have to figure out how to move around this to bring it up. But today I don't think I'm gonna get a pattern. I think he, he made that decision in the morning, but he did give me the fabric. And so, oh, it's so pretty. I know it goes in this orientation, and this is the fabric. And the name of the color is called Haunted Hollow. And it's a 28 count Jobelin. <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? I'll have to figure out which way to do the orientation. I'll probably do it like this maybe. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to, I might just flip a coin to decide on that. And I got two skeins, um, a black. <laughs> and um a red uh 666 and he thought it was really funny that dmc made a color that is double red and numbered it 666 i think that's the number of right numbers so that's day one um we are going away today's actually our anniversary and so we're going away we'll be back tomorrow though just going away overnight um, so I am still can film tomorrow, which is great. I don't think I'll get any stitching done. I don't think he's going to give me the first bit of the pattern until tomorrow. I'll probably start in the center. I think it's the safest thing to get the most colors and it's also safe for the pattern. So I'm going to start in the center. I just have to pick which box or boxes around the center. But, uh, yeah. Happy Halloween. Yeah. See you tomorrow. We are on, today is October 2nd, and we are on a road trip, and I just wanted to show a little bit of the fall colors that is happening here in Nova Scotia, in South Nova Scotia. It's, uh, we had a race last night, which was really fun, and I got day two of my Flossoween, and what I got today were two colors. There they are. There they are. 209 and 721. Awesome. That's it for today. Bye. Oop, a little out of order, but here's day three. So I'm going to just open it up. So I got a little package and I'm going to open it up. And it's two flosses. And there they are. And it's 209 and 972. I actually already looked at these and they're not in my pattern, but there they are. They're beautiful, just the same. I love them. I really, really do. So they'll just go in my stash. Uh, I might be able to, uh, 971 is the one, one of the ones he hasn't got. And he's already given me 973 and no, no, 971 and 973 are in the pattern. He gave me 972 right smack in the middle. So that's how it works. So I give him back the, the, we keep recycling this bag. So I'll give him back the empty bag for tomorrow. And I put these in my um, kit. So into my 4-H, <laughs> my little stitch. So I think that's it for me. That was a heck of a lot of stuff to cover. Um, I'm gonna, so you're gonna see now day one and day two. And um, I'm going to film every day, but I'm not going to post every day. So I probably will do it at least once a week. So then you're just going to have the Flossoweens, the days, whatever, day four to day 11 or something like that. And then I'll have my regular um, uh, floss tube with content. I'm going to wing this. I'm going to decide as I go. I might just show you the stitching every week just to keep on top of it. It'll probably be easier. Uh, there'll be shorter videos still, but they may not be. Who knows? Who knows? So hopefully I might be back this Friday and just do the, the things. Probably not. I'll probably be back next Monday. So I'll see you next week. And happy stitching, everybody. And happy October. By the way, October is my favorite month. Yes. <laughs> so we'll see you next week. Bye.